there's a couple of methods that are peak. And so in peak, what we want to do is we want to take a look at our linked list. So here's a simple linked list. And so the peak methods are designed so that we can just take a quick look at that element and figure out what it is, but not necessarily remove it and delete it from the list like we've saw, seen before. One way you could implement that, of course, is to do a remove first, you get the element back, and then do an add first to put it back in the same spot. But that's kind of a waste of time to keep doing those manipulations. All we need to do is get our head pointer and say, what's head.data? So our peak first method is just going to return head.data. We had five conditions that we had to check to see, um, to worry about when we're working on data structures, right? What was the first of those conditions? An empty list. And what's going to happen if we try and return head.data on an empty list? We're going to get a null pointer exception. And so we need to just make sure that we have something in our, li in our list. And the easiest way to do that is just to say if head is equal to null, return null. Okay. So that's our peak first method, very simple. For our peak last method, one of the ways that we can do it is set a temporary pointer and set temp initially pointing to head. And we can move along and say, is this the last element? No. Is this the last element? No. Is this the last element? No. The way that we check whether this is the last element in each of these cases is by looking at the value of the next. Okay. And so the loop in this case would look something like this. While temp.next does not equal null. And I want to emphasize the difference between these two loops. While temp does not equal null versus while temp.next does not equal null. In the first case, while temp.next is not equal to null, we're going to start at the head, temp.next is not null, go to the next element, temp.next is not null, go to the next element. In this case, temp.next is null. So in this case, we're going to stop at the last node. Okay. In the second case, when we're checking for temp not equal to null, temp is not null here, temp is not null here, temp is not null here, temp is null when we go past the last node. Okay, So in this case, we go past the last node. There are some cases where it's important to go past the last node. For example, in the contains method or the remove method where you're given an object to remove. But there are some cases where it's really important to stop at the last node. For example, if we want to do peak last like this, um, or in our remove last method, where we want to have one pointer that stops at the last node and one pointer that stops at the node before it. Okay? So there's a very fundamental difference between these two. In a peak last method, we would say, well, temp.next is not equal to null. While temp.next is not equal to null, temp is equal to temp.next, and then return temp.data. Okay. What's the complexity of doing peak last like this? It's big O of n, right? Because we're starting at the beginning, and we're going to visit every node through our list. If our node has 10 things, we have to visit 10 things. If our node has 1,000 things, we have to go through 1,000 things. If our node has a million things, we have to go through all million of them. You guys, remember, you guys have a tail pointer. And our tail pointer provides us some benefits. So for example, 
to get the last thing using peak last. We can just return tail dot data. What's the complexity of doing that? It's big O of one, it's constant time, right? If there's a million things in our list, we don't have to go through a million things to get to tail.data. We're right there. Again, we need to make sure that our list isn't empty. And we can also do that using tail. If tail is not equal to null, sorry, that's not right. If tail is equal to null, return null. Otherwise, return tail.data. So we don't get a null pointer exception. 